welcome back to the channel. It's been increasingly hot the uh, last week or so here in Sweden, so I can barely use clothes anymore. I have had to sort of learn how to make some kind of man bun, I suppose, because I can't even have my hair hanging down on my back because that's also too hot. So I just have to accept that I'm a little bit undressed during this weather. I've been working on some pretty boring stuff in the renovation since the last time I made a video. Putting boards up in the ceiling, uh, finishing the exterior paneling. But I didn't really feel like it was necessary to film that. So I uh, just waited until now when I have a more interesting project going. Some friends of ours are getting married and they are very much into the Viking and medieval scene. And uh, I thought it would be nice to make them a little gift. So what I plan is to take a couple of the biggest boards from the milling and uh, make them a Viking inspired bench, a knockdown bench. Then they can choose to either use it at home or bring it to reenactment events, uh, which is uh, where we originally got to know them anyway. So that's what I'm gonna do now, and uh, hopefully it will be interesting. I brought the material in, as you saw, but I actually haven't done any sketching yet, so I will get on with that now. Well, a seat, some sort of um, both legs and support for the back piece. And the board in between here, something like that. Mortise and tenon joints held together with wedges. I will probably make two mortises on each side. I'll see about that. Or maybe I won't. I like to do these things with as few small loose parts as possible. I might do some sort of an armrest and uh, probably since I have quite a lot of experience in those things. I'll make some sort of animal head and some chunky rustic carving here in the middle, probably. Not sure how that will look. <laughs> that sort of started turning into the Thalsa Doom symbol from the Conan movies. Maybe I should do something like that. I'm not sure if they are fans of that old movie or not. Alright, that's the general idea. And uh, yeah, what do you think? Should I use this as uh, the main plans? Or no, probably not. Here's a slightly better representation of the idea. As you can see, the total length of all the pieces will be 150 centimeters. The seating area will be 120. Uh, so the tenons will be about 15 centimeters. And uh, these will not only be supported by the tenon, the whole width of the plank will also be supported by a groove like this. And then the tenon comes in the middle of that. I've done this thing before on shelves and beds and stuff and it's much better than just letting the tenon go through because then if you put a heavy load on the edge of a bench for instance then it can crack along the grain from where the tenon stops like here. And we won't we won't be happy to see that on the wedding, I think.
making some drawings trying my own seating position looking at some chairs and this is what I came up with I decided I wanted to make the base and the back in a 90 degree angle if the welding couple would choose to put this bench inside against the wall the seat I will put forward by 5 centimeters or something that's about 2 inches the back will go up to 1 meter and have a slight angle to make it comfortable it will not be supported all the way inside of, of the gable as I was planning to because it has to lean back it will run all the way but it will not have any support on the back for the top half instead I will make a half mortise in the top part it will go into the wood but not through it and in the bottom half I will make it through mortise and uh, the mortise for the seat will go all the way through and there will be a groove all the way out to the edge I will round it off a little bit here on the corner on the piece that sticks out simple head simple circular shape for the armrest total height 150 centimeters the bottom half of uh, the gables are about 43 centimeters wide I think that's 17 inches it would have been even better if I had planks that were like 50 centimeters wide but this was the widest ones I had I don't know what 50 will be in inches about 20 inches now I will have to do with 17 inches and um, that's why I have to put the seat a little bit forward so the bench can't tilt backwards and fall over yeah, 60 centimeters up to the armrest, not too high because I don't want it to feel like a squeeze to sit on the bench even though the seating area will be 120 centimeters wide that's because of the historical clothes that they will be using they are sort of yeah they make you a little bit big especially around the waist and hips since you have usually I know it some sort of belt with a belt purse and other stuff so I can't make a wedding bench that's too narrow for the couple to sit in and uh, that's also why I want to keep the armrest a little bit low just enough to get some support when you are getting out of the bench I just have to play the timbers a bit before I start laying the cut pattern out so you can see it's not exactly flat it doesn't have to be perfectly flat for a rustic bench like this but well you just can't really let it be like this without trying to fix it a little bit and also the surface isn't that nice anyway this is a number six bench plane it's what you would probably refer to as a jack plane number five is more common the bigger one isn't used that often but since it's quite a big piece of timber I thought I'd try that one you can also use it as a small jointer if you want to This will do. It also works as a primitive straight edge, and I can see there is a cup in the middle, which was expected. It always cuts up to the center. So I need 
to take out the center and uh, the far right corner from where I'm sitting is high, so I will first take the center and then I will plane diagonally like that to take that out. some rough cutting before I continue with the planing because there's such a bad knot here that it's really not much use trying to plane it if I'm more anyway gonna cut it away later. The base is down here, the top part is here, the underman head will come here, this will be cut away. stop. not to use water, use alcohol instead, that I don't know about. If you know about it, put a comment down and let me know. But I have seen expert craftsmen that specialize in planing that use water, so I don't really think there is a problem with it. 
And if the problem is that your blade rusts when it gets in contact with the water, I think personally that it means that you're not using your planes often enough. But sure, when you're done, if you're afraid of that, take the blade out, wipe it off with a little bit of oil maybe, then you will never get rust on it. Now that I flipped the board around, the cup is on the other direction, so the edges are high and the middle is low, which you can hear when I run the plane over here. It cuts in the beginning and the end. And uh, that causes a lot of tear out here, which is why it can be a good idea to just take the edge down a bit, like this. I'll do so on the other side as well. Mostly because this ugly knot here is no fun playing. workshop slightly cooler today so I can wear a little bit more clothes without dying I finished the planing on all the four timbers and apparently I chose the worst one to demonstrate the planing on the one with the worst knots anyway it's done now to uh, such a degree that it's totally okay for a rustic bench like this and now I'm gonna lay out the cutting pattern for the gable ends with the uh, 
the dragon head and the, the armrest and the legs in the bottom. I'll start with that and I'll do the seat and the backrest when those are done. Right, let's do that. So I will scribe a line from top to bottom, make a 90 degree down at the bottom and uh, work from there. Just laying out the basic measurements and then I'll copy those to the other piece so I make them more or less the same. It doesn't have to be exactly the same but well, more or less, you'll see. this so I get a 90 degree angle to to the reference line. All right let's see measurements I'm talking centimeters and millimeters and stuff now so from the base up to the seat 40 almost 16 inches and I have a rule here I can easily translate it because it has both metric system and imperial I like to use both depends on the situation also the armrest I don't know how far in it will go somewhere not quite in the middle I will start going up before that maybe two fifths in or something I'll just draw it on there and see what looks right style ornamentations and carvings but uh, every time I try to keep it really simple I realize I just can't but I will do my best this time not to put too much work into it keeping it rough and rustic because that's the style I want on the bench but also because I'm a little bit pressed for time looks like a viking dragon, it looks more like some sort of dog, I think. And I don't really want a dog's head on this. The couple that's going to get it, they are dog owners, so of course <laughs> I would love to have a dog. Something like this. kind of a 
dragon heads or snake heads depending on if there are any other limbs on the body or not but when you see these big elongated eyes on them then you are usually pretty late in the viking era somewhere around the year 1000 or so the earlier well, uh, that's mostly based on what I have seen on rune stones and picture stones. The earlier stones, those heads are simpler, smaller, and the, the eyes are a lot smaller. So this is some sort of late Viking style. But I just prefer them. I think they look better, so I usually do them like that. I'm just going to repeat the process on this one more or less, but there is an irregular spot down at the base. There's a knot that makes the edge come out a little bit more, so I have to measure a little bit on the first one, try to match it with that. centimeters wide yeah and there we are I think something along those lines and a little knob here centimeters so on this end I will not do 12 centimeters I'll do 11 it wasn't quite as wide as the first one right then back to the jigsaw Side. Oh, this is the back, this is the uh, Should be an S on this, there's a B on this. That's going to be tomorrow's project because uh, it's getting late today and uh, dinner is coming up. 
so uh, I'll continue with that tomorrow. I'll just clean up a little bit here before I end for today.